We're going to have fun because you and I always do. <laughs> so is it recording now? Yeah. Okay, well, Mike, look, uh, finally, it's, it's great to see you again and have you here. You know, we've been friends for years. And I was actually yes, just thinking sir. of some of the workouts we took here in Australia. They were just way too competitive because we were so friendly. <laughs> we just turned it into a game where we just ignored everyone in the gym. We got stuck into those workouts. They were they were too much. They were too That's much. That's right. It was crazy. It was <laughs> Iron Warriors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, but Mike, let's you now. Like, tell me about you, your family, the business you're involved in. So I want to let you talk, you know, books, supplements, anything that you're involved in, please, you do the talking. Love to listen. Go ahead. No, you ask me questions, John. It's better. Go ahead and ask me questions. Okay, I so... Have too much to say. <laughs> so, Mike, who who originally got you started? Because I've, I've heard a couple okay. of things. You know, where where did you start? Why did you start? I started... And, yeah. I started in 1976 in, in uh, a place called uh, Chucka Models Gym in, in uh, Portland, Oregon. Chucka Motto. He and was a Mr. America competitor. Yeah, he was a, right. In Mr. America, he was in the middleweight class, placed in top five numerous occasions. So uh, he kind of talked me into it, and I said no a hundred times. <laughs> I'm not going to put no oil on them little skinny trunks and get on stage. <laughs> But he finally talked me into it, and I went to my first contest, John, and I got, I was blessed. Won the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. Wow. I got lucky. I, got lucky. I won wow. 10 in a row. <laughs> That's incredible. I didn't know that. I, I'm not sure anybody's yeah. ever done that, Mike. Yeah, I was lucky. I was blessed. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what I say? There's nothing lucky about people who are lucky. There, there was something behind that. Whether, it, <laughs> you know, I, I, I know how you can focus. You know, yes. and uh, even when I used to come to Los Angeles, you'd be up the whole night because you were in charge of security. Yet you would yeah. come into the gym, take a workout. Nobody could stop you. And, you know, I've never seen I've never quite seen anything like that. You were just impervious of any shit yes. that happened outside the gym. You'd come in there and yes. do it. And most people couldn't do that. That's true. Yeah, I even got a, a, a job uh, for uh, Matt Mendenhall. He worked the security at one point, you know. Right. Okay. But uh, yeah, it was uh, working all night long with the uh, security job at the hotel, a block from the beach, and you know we had transits coming in there every night and breaking in the room. I had to kick them out and send them to jail, and it was it was a tough job. But I, I prevailed. I came to the gym next morning, twice a day, trained hard, and you know did, did what I had to. do. Now, did you ever have a weirder contract? You there? Yes, I am. Yeah. Did you ever have a weeder contract, Mike? Did I ever have a what a contract? A weeder? Weeder, yeah. No, I did not. No, he offered me one and uh he won a little bit too much and uh and I, I turned him down. I never had a weeder contract. I actually did one year I did a thing where we did an exchange for uh ad for a contact uh, a contract with my uh uh, sportswear. Remember Platinum yes, Everwear? My sportswear yes. baggy pants. I created in California, wild and crazy California look yep. back in the 80s. And um, we did a trade-off. He gave me a full-page color ad and I uh, uh, yeah, did the supplements, basically. Okay. You know, Mike, you were one of the best then. I'm, you know, you, you never took Haney down, but you know, yeah. sometimes when, when you compare <laughs> to him, you know, I'm going, this guy's so close. And then, you know, Rich Gaspari got in there, but like, you yeah. know, for size, conditioning, yeah. uh, shape, you, you know, everything you represented, like, you know, I always used to look at your body and this guy's incredible, you know, <clears throat> and we always maintained a friendship, even though we competed against each other. I think we always had each other's back from what I could see. We, we always did, John. In, in one of those years, I think you could be Amy, too. And that's between me and you and everybody else, too. But uh, Thank you, you were great, too. One of a kind, you know, symmetrical, uh, hard, big, pers a great personality. You, you've always been a great friend of mine, John. Always and forever will be. Thank you, Mike. It's the same with me. Now, look, I remember probably the best shape... The best shape I ever saw you in in photos 
was in the Mr. America. I think they gave you third, and you had the best condition in the whole show. Yeah. And I remember when they gave you they gave you the trophy. You like wanted to leave, and I could see why, because you were the yeah. best conditioned athlete there. And you know what? You got a classic physique, no matter what anybody wants to say. Except you're yeah. big, always had a small waist, one of the best yeah. V tapers, shoulders and arms. Nobody else had them. Nobody else had them. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened that day, but you had uh, Rory Littlemeyer, who was big, but he, he wasn't conditioned. And you had this, Bob Paris. Bob, Bob, he, he looked really good. But, you know, when you did that most muscular, any angle we put, we saw you from, we right. were like, how did this guy get third? You know, yes, I, 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 I could see. Audience actually booed that contest, and the, and the promoter was um, I forget his name, but he was he was from San Jose. He was from Paul. Um, what's Paul's name? Paul, I can't remember. But he was promoting the show. After prejudging John, he came up to me and said, "You got this show." The whole crowd, oh, you won, you got it, the whole thing. So it was a really heartbreaker because when I went in the show in the evening show, John, as you know, you're, you're all hyped up for the first place trophy. Yeah. And then they hollered third. And it, it, just, oh, it tore me out. The girl that actually was trying to give me the uh, trophy was Pillow, the bodybuilder yeah. Pillow. Back yeah. And she had to actually run across the stage back and forth because I wouldn't accept the trophy, okay. <laughs> which was terrible sportsmanship. It yeah. never happened again, of course, but it yeah. was just, it was Pretty a heartbreaker. Yeah, I, I could see that. To this day, everybody that looks at that video, and I talk to them uh, about it, they they're yeah. like, "How did this guy end up in yeah. third? But it was look, it was a very difficult thing to ha to have done, but y yeah. you made up for it because then yeah. the year later you won the America, the Universe, you you became pro. You were one of the best pros when you won that pro world where you beat Brian Buchanan. You know, yeah. um, you, you proved yourself and you were like always whisker close w yeah. with Haney. And I, I just think, you know, when he was on a roll, it would have been difficult for the judges to just stop yeah. that and give it to you. Uh, he was very good. He was very he good. Was great. He would say, I always say, John, that the only one he was worried about was Mike Christian. I think so. Because of my tall frame. I was a little bit taller than him. I had a big frame. But he was all—he wasn't worried about the short guy. He said, <laughs> yeah. he was worried about me. I was the one he always worried about. So I, I really pushed him to his limit. But um, he's a great friend. Still, is a great friend. He used to call me his babysitter because when he came down to California from Atlanta, Georgia, I mean, helped him, you know, find out the places to eat and sleep and train and you know, stay away from certain things and, and people. So. This day, calls me says Mike Christian was my babysitter when he when I came to California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <That's> pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know you would be good at that because I I, I know how you care for your friends. You know, yeah. I, I know you would be good at that. So, Mike, let's talk a little bit about your training. You yeah. know, when you were at your best, I remember once you came into Gold's Gym and you said you were you were just feeling so good. You woke up the next morning, you could feel the muscles growing on your back. Yeah. You described it to me. So, you know, guys don't train like that anymore, I don't think. They, they don't eat the way we ate. Everybody's lost. And, you know, this interview really is to preserve and bring back what we had because, you know, the way guys are looking today, there's not a Mike Christian out there. There's, there's no, no one like that. There's, no. So, you know. I mean, I, I, I would say, Don, it, it, it's sad to say, but. And some of the guys ain't gonna like what I'm gonna say, but I, I really believe it's basically chemical warf warfare nowadays. <laughs> you know, back when our days, we trained hard, and, you know, we, we we did what we had to do to win. But the guys now, they just pump up a bunch of you know weights and go on the contest and you know and look the way they look with the guts sticking out and, and what have you. But um, uh, back in our day, it was hardcore, real deal training, like Arnold's days, also too. You know, but. When I went to the gym, I basically turned into the Iron Warrior. And it was like a cartoon character, uh, looking at it as, as, a, as a character, that I would go in the gym, have my wave cap, remember my black wave cap, yep. cap I used to yep. wear all the time? <laughs> yep. And turn into the Iron Warrior. And I was at war with the weights. And I was going to beat them weights every single time. <laughs> yeah. Mike, how many times a week did you train each body part? Mm -hmm. And I, I train, I train every body part twice a week. 
Yeah. I did the push pull. I've been doing the push pull for many, many years. Probably the last mm, 30 years. I still do it nowadays. And that was what I learned from Chuck Amaro. And basically, you do chest, shoulders, triceps one day, all pu pushing, back, biceps the next day, all pulling, legs the third day, the fourth day I take off, and then the cycle repeats. That way, you get full recuperation between each muscle work. Like if you work chest one day, next day is your shoulders. Indirectly, you're hitting your shoulders and chest twice in a row. Yeah. So I, I really felt that was the best workout for me ever, and I, I still continue to train that way. So it makes sense. It's logical, basically. You know. <laughs> I, I've, I've done it. I've done it myself. I, I, I love training like that. Um, yes. Mike, what sort of loads did you use? Because even though you're a really strong guy, I, I used to yeah. see your weights would always vary. Did you go by feel or, you know, what, what was behind that? Because back then we just took it for granted. But now it, it's like I'm seeing Fine. a theme that, that these yeah. guys just don't do anymore. So I wanted to know from you, how did you determine your load? Mm -hmm. What I did is I did, like I said, I did every body part twice a week. So the first time I would come in to example chest, I would train eight to 10 reps, heavy as I can. I never went light, but heavy as I can, eight to 10 reps. So basically, when you get, once you get to eight, 10 reps and it's easy, it's time to go heavier. So yeah. pyramid, that would stay with that eight to 10 reps every time. And then the next time I work the same body part, for example, chest, I would do 15 to 20. Okay. So that, that way you're hitting both. Some people work with heavy weight and light weights, some people work with light weights and more reps. That way you can't lose. I train yeah. everybody twice a week, one day heavy, heavy every, every day heavy, basically. But sometimes 8 to 10, next time 15 to 20. You can't yeah. lose. Very well, logical. I, I kind of did that myself. So obviously there's a theme that we all used to follow. Yeah. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, mm -hmm. um, you didn't really worry about, did you worry about the speed of the reps or did you just bang them out? No, I, I did everything, John. And to this day, I do the same thing. I'll do one time, I'll do drop, drop sets. Next time, I'll do negatives. Next time, I'll do tri sets. But, you know, I'll, I'll just I'll always do something different. You got to keep the body guessing. That's the only way it's going to keep on growing. You know, if you're doing the same thing for year after year, it's the same thing. So I would always, every workout will be different. Every workout, drop sets, negatives, you know. Just do always something different. Now, and I always use one thing, cables, dumbbells, barbells, and machines. I would always mix it up. You know, because you can train every body part on each one. So, Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm really glad to be hearing this because even though we train together, I I, I, yeah. I it was just, like I said, it was far too competitive. But we, we were in there more to have fun. I, I don't remember. I remember some of the stuff we did, but. I, I just wanted to ask, you know, how did you actually do it? Because, you know, people need to know this. Now, Mike, yeah. uh, with your diet, you know, yeah. you, you put something up on Facebook a while back. You were dieting for something for Valentine's <laughs> Day. And mm -hmm. when I saw how strict you did things, <laughs> I'm saying, like, this guy's huge. How, you know, can he do this? Like, little or no food. Can you explain yeah. what, that, what you were doing then? And, and then I want to know what you did when you were competing. If it's still the okay. same, yeah. I'm going to be uh, totally honest with you and all your, your listeners out there. I only took anabolic roids for contests. I didn't take them off-season. Most people did off-season and for a contest. So when I took them before a contest, the last two weeks, two months for a contest, I was scared to do three months, but it would be six, eight weeks. But in them six, eight weeks, John, I would put on 15, 20 pounds of muscle. They would see me and count me out the contest. Six weeks or so, two months or so, I was like, yeah, I'll never make it. He's freaking 210, you know? Yeah. And I put every week, I put on seven, eight pounds of muscle. And that's because it's like the first time you ever take it, you get that crazy response, and, you know. And my, my diet, when I went on the diet, John, I went on diet that day. Like you see some of the other guys, they slowly go into the diet. I never slowly went into it because I had my back against the wall. I only had eight weeks. I didn't have 12 weeks like the rest of you guys. You know, I would do eight weeks. I couldn't do no 12 week diet. I was, I was the worst to call me whatever, whatever. You know, I was lazy. <laughs> but I only could do six to eight weeks diet. But the six to eight weeks diet was everything was perfect. 
the amino acids, the sleep, the eating protein five times a day. And I could eat one time a day and be full. I had to force feed myself five or six small meals a day full of protein. I'm just the type that has a fast metabolism and I can eat one, two times a day and I'm good. So I had to force everything was like perfect. Boom, the tan, the boom, boom, boom everything. Well, I was a perfectionist when it came to, uh, you know, going on stage and doing my thing, you know. Now, with your diet, w was it mainly protein? Did you have some carbohydrates in there? And if you had carbs, you know, what sort of carbs were you having? Were you I had, I had medium carbs, nothing crazy. It was just ba basically white rice, you know, some vegetables here and there. But I would have the carbs maybe twice a day, and that was it. I okay. Was just blessed that I could do twice a day on carbs, and I could still respond the way I respond. I was pretty genetically gifted, basically. You know, I didn't have to, you know, have a bunch of carbs twice a day, and that was working just fine for me. You know, once we were on a Grand Prix tour, and uh, <laughs> you you said to me, "I'm not sure why you're doing this. You you should be resting. You know, I I I'm in a different position." And then I said to you. Uh, do you want something to eat? I haven't seen you eat. And you know what you said to me? You said, no, I'm okay. I ate yesterday. Uh, this, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, how does he do this? Yeah. You know, you, 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 you hardly ate when we were traveling. True. Yeah, it's true, man. I did. I would just do hardcore and wouldn't eat. I could go a couple days without eating and still gain muscle. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. I'm glad I'm finding all this out now because then we, we were just yeah, in, in the middle of it. And I, this guy's eating and growing. <laughs> He's when got you, to do something. <laughs> yeah. When you said that to me, I, I actually left the Grand Prix tour because I was ill. And yeah, I, I th when I was flying back to New York, I, I thought, how does he do that? This guy ate the, the, the day before. <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody was on the plane eating their prep meals and whatever. Yeah. And you were doing nothing. Yeah, uh -huh. I remember that day you just went on stage and I didn't see you touch anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that, that was incredible. Now, yeah. Mike, uh, how, what do you do now compared to, to back then? Do you still train the same way? Um, no, I, I don't train as hard anymore. I go heavy, but not super heavy. You know, like, for example, before I leg press a couple thousand pounds for 10 reps, I'll say around seven, 800 down, pounds for... 12, 15 reps. So I, I go moderately uh, heavy. Um, I still do the push pull, chest, shoulder, yep. triceps, the back bicep, legs. Still stay on the same routine. Eating, I try to eat three times a day instead of the two times a day that you know really makes me full when I'm trying to stay in a certain form. You know, because that's business. Yeah, you gotta look halfway decent most of the time. You know, and um, that's it. Training and dieting. Nothing crazy. Now, Mike, uh, around Valentine's Day, you went on some crazy diet. Oh, you remember that? Huh? You, you got to you got to explain that because I don't think people are going to believe it. You you lit, one day I think there was no food or you were just having crystal light. Yes. T tell me I how did you that. did that because that's that's just something I've never heard before. Yeah, basically, I did that to kickstart my guy diet. I was heavy and I had put on an extra 20, 30 pounds. I was a little pudgy looking. I like the way I look. And you know, when you diet regular, it takes time to get into the diet. I, I thought to myself, I don't know if I figured it out, but I figured out that if I kickstart my diet and go on a zero carb, zero food for three days, three or four days, so eat nothing, that would kickstart your diet and then I would implement a little protein in one the, after the fourth, fifth day, a little vegetables and slowly put more into it. But it actually worked for me. It kicked out my diet, and boom. Once I got on track, I was okay. Okay. But I really never really dieted more than two months worth of contest. Yeah, but, you, you know. I have you, to die, now, John, I have to diet three months because, you know, I'm a little older. I'm 64 yeah. now. So I have to diet a little, a little longer now. But before, I never dieted more than two months worth of contest. This is blessed, man. No, I see you all the time on social media, Mike. You're looking really good. You know, Thank um, you, yeah. mo most guys, uh, including myself, I've, I've had some <laughs> operations and I'm not looking my best. But when I see you, uh, I'm going, this guy Thank is just you, like a, a smaller version of, of the same you. person in the 80s. You, you look so healthy. 
so good looking, yeah. you dress nice, Thank you so everything. Much. It's, it's just so good to see. So, Mike, what, what do you do now? Are you a personal trainer? Because you know what? If you are, if people were smart, they would, they would come to you because all, all the people on social media, they're, they're just yep. social media experts. They're, they're not even qualified personal trainers. <laughs> and, you better believe it. Not at all. <laughs> you know, you're, yeah. you're not only qualified, you got something that nobody else has and, and yeah. that nobody can beat. That's experience. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't beat experience. Can. Yeah, and if you recall, I mean, not too many people know this. Some people do, but I went through seven years of fighting my demons. Seven years. Six years of not training in the gym. I didn't touch any weights. Six years, and I still look like this. I am so blessed. Because you see some of them other guys, they're like they're, you know, like they're younger than me and they look older than me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. No, I'm look uh, for, for your age. I see some guys. You said you're 64. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, um, usually 64 year old men. Uh, they're done. Ronnie, they look. You know, they're younger than me. Five years younger. And boy, <laughs> and I had seven years of fighting my demons. So I am blessed. I so Mike, every day, John, say I'm blessed. When you were with. Uh, what was that federation that Vince McMahon ran? Um, the WBF. World now, Biden. there, that was that was not the Mike Christian that I knew. I do you want to? Do you feel comfortable telling us what happened and how you yes. came out of it? Please go ahead and tell me. I'm really After interested. His, uh, he offered me and thirteen other athletes uh, a, a substantial amount of money. Uh, I got three hundred thousand, and it was a trip down because I would wake up every morning. And get that check in the mail for $25,000 and look at it for five, 10 minutes. I couldn't believe it because we weren't doing anything. And I had to be, we had to guest post, we had to send our, we had to run around and, and make, make our living. I got a check for doing nothing. He had one contest a year. And where I think he failed, John, to be honest with you, is he did not start an amateur federation. So he yeah. had no way of recouping his money. He was paying us millions of dollars, but he couldn't recoup his money. He would do a TV show here and there, but it just wasn't enough. So, I mean, it was a great show. I have no regrets on joining the Federation. Um, a story that happened is I, I actually went to Joe Weider before I signed the contract. Vince McMahon flew me down a private jet and offered me 300000 and and what have you. And I came back home, and I called Joe, and I said, Cause I, want, I want to talk to you about this Federation. He said, fine. I came down. Joe said, I told him what, what I was getting. I told Joe, I said, I don't expect you to compete with that, Joe. I don't expect to get $300,000 a year from you. But um, I have a family. I want to get a house. You know, I have children. And I want to live life. I said, you know, if you can you know, take care of me some kind of way, you know, I'll stay. And he, he looked at me right in the face, John. He says, Mike, I will not compete. He said, he will not compete. So in other words, he didn't want to compete with John, Vince McMahon and go back and forth with other athletes offering a little bit of money here, more money there. So I said, I took it, you know, and it was the best time of my life besides the part that we had after the first year. The first year went fine. Um, the second year, the FBI was looking at him for the steroid things with the wrestlers because they were saying he was giving the steroids to the wrestlers. So they came down really heavy on Ben. And then he came down heavy on us, which he told us we had to stop using steroids in order to compete in this contest. And that was just something that we, we were all used to doing and we did it all our lives and we expected it and, you know, and we just really all went to hell. And I had an even really hard time because I, I found out I was bipolar so I was coming down from the bipolarism and coming off the steroids at the same time. Oh, so I had yeah. really lows, lows that were lower than I've ever discovered in my life. And it hit me, and I ended up trying to find it out through something else. The pain was just so heavy on my heart. You know, I looked for something to help me with the pain, and I ended up doing some super stuff. So it was, it was, it was a gift, and it was, a, it was hell, you know. But he was a good guy. I actually went to uh, the Betty Ford uh, Treatment Center, and he paid half the money. And it was twenty thousand dollars to get in the Betty Ford. 
So he was he was really behind me. I, and that was after the contest was over and open. And um, if you um, he had a test that if you had any drugs in your body, you would uh, be charged twenty thousand dollars and lose your contract. So the first year I did okay. I played second, and I thought I should have won the first one, but um, I took uh, second. The second contest I was on, you know, I got off the drugs and went on other other drugs, and uh, and he took the contract and um, just life went to hell from there. So, Mike, you've pretty much explained. I think people can read between the lines, and you know, you've come yeah. out of it. The fact is, you've come out of it. You didn't stay down. You got up. You I moved definitely. forward. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're doing really well. But how did it end for Vince? How, how did it finally finish? Because we really don't know. Uh, we just saw it disappear. Yeah. Well, because he couldn't fund his uh, bodybuilding show, and he also had a vitamin company and a book, Lifestyles of the whatever, what it was, was, he couldn't fund it anymore. So after the second year, and he had to have us get off of steroids, and we didn't have the look that people were expecting to see after at the same show. He folded, so he ended the contest after second year. So how did he? How did he advise you guys? Any of our contracts. So we all. I ended up losing money. I I failed the the test and stuff. So I ended up losing tons of money and and was uh, uh, put out the contest. So I basically you know went and had a hard time and went through that my years and years of you know. And then after a couple of years, I put it together and start living life again. Now, Mike, now you, you live in Texas. You mm -hmm. do personal training. You've got yes. your act together. Yes. And um, which goals gym, you, you work out of a goals gym or what sort of, which gym do you work out of? I work out about three or four gyms. Goals okay. gym, I work out 24 hour. I go to LA Fitness. I just go where the clients are that I train. And then I have a little personal uh, place at my place too, so okay. I just get around. But I'm really working. I, I'm doing a book, and that's what my passion is, John. Yeah, want to basically give back and show people that you can get down and out and get back on your feet and make it. You know, if I can help two or three people, I'm the happiest man in the world. That's what my passion is now. I've always loved to helping people anyway. You know that, John. Yeah, I really want to help people going down that road, John. And maybe read that book. Maybe their son, their daughter, their mother, their father, grandkid, whatever. See their kid going down that road and say, hey, read this book. This guy been through what you're going through. Read it. And maybe they can look at it and read it and, you know, kind of pick yourself back up and say, wait a minute. You know, because I was doing the strip bar, you know, I was making money. I was making $30,000 a month. So I was just having fun, nothing to do, having fun and drinking and doing drugs and just doing my thing. So if I can help other people going down that road, making a lot of money, you know, and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see what's ahead and turn left instead of right. I'm the happiest man in the world. That's my passion. That's what I want to do. I love training people. I love helping people. That's all good. And, you know, but I really want to work on this book. And I've been working with it for over a year now. And it's almost done. I think this year will be done. But it's 60 years, John. It's my whole life story. I just do bodybuilding. I did the whole life story. So, so who's, just, who's helping just you? Right? Family. I grew up. My mom died when I was nine. I had a lot of problems. I, I won my first 10 shows. There's good and bad. You know, it's ups and downs through the whole show. It's like a roller coaster ride. So it's a really good story that I think can help others. And that's my passion. That's what I'm working on now. So it's the book. I want to do my own contest, Iron Warrior Classic. I'm working on that, too. Texas right now has quite a few contests, so they haven't really let me do it here in Texas as of yet. But I want to do the Iron Warrior Contest. I want to do my a book. I want to work on my per personal training. I want to open up my own gym. And that's, that's I'm married. I'm happy. You know, I love, I'm living life. And, you know, it, you know, it's not all about having the millions like I had before. I mean, literally, I made millions of dollars. I have my own sportswear company as you know platinum everywhere and i was making millions i was doing a million a year just in norson that's a big department store in california and a million a year in uh a, a big five it's another big time uh uh sportswear store in california and i had 18 countries around the world i was selling my clothes wow. to i stray all over you know <laughs> my clothes were all it was the hottest sportswear in the 80s 
So I made lots of money, you know? So now it's not all about making all those millions and the more money you make, more problems you got, as we know. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy, you know? I'm not making millions, so I'm making a nice some chunk of money and got me a nice car, my wife, nice house, and we do fine. I'm happy living life now, John. That's, Just that's, like you, you, look, you look extremely happy, happy now, John. You're well, ready to. I've been you know, I've, I've had I've had my demons as well, and you know what? Yeah. I want your book. When you've written that book, I want a copy. I'm gonna sign it. Okay. And so you, you and what's, it, believe. what's it called? What's the I name of the book? Uh, OG to uh, the world champion. Say it again. Uh, OG means the original gangster. OG. Okay. Original gangster. Because I was in a gang. I mean, I started out in the gang, and I, you know, I was pretty bad. I was. Shooting people and beating up people and doing the whole real deal. A lot of people don't know that part, that side of my Christian. So I'm telling the whole story. So OG to world champion, that's pretty. <laughs> I mean, I was in the gang before um, this famous guy named Tookie Williams. He was a crip. Yeah. And he got Arnold put him, you know, had to put, put him away. And I was in it before him. So I got a hell of a story. <laughs> that yeah, for sure. The testimony from where I came from and where I what I achieved and you know what I'm doing now is a, it's definitely a testimony. I believe. I think so. I I'm praying so. <laughs> yeah. No, that's going to be a bestseller. I can I tell you so. that's going to be a bestseller because you know people are going to read this. They're going to see it, and yes. it's you know um, God works in mysterious ways. And this yes. book, you know, this yes. book is going to help a lot of people. Um, I, I definitely want a copy for me and Mike, who's helping you write the book? Are you doing it yourself or do you have somebody assisting you? Professional writer. I wrote most of it myself, but it's time to take it to a professional writer. Just make sure everything is done the right way. And then there's parts in there that I think should be in there and it may not should be in there, you know? And, and uh, so I, I'm leaving it kind of up to her. Given her everything, everything I wrote for all the years, you know, four years of writing down everything. I've given it all to her. She's putting it in perspective in the right form. And then I'll, whatever I want to take out and take out, or I can add something in, I can do whatever I want. So we're on the right track for sure. Yeah. I definitely. Yeah. So, Mike, look, whatever you want to say now, because I know you didn't want to do this for too long, and I know yeah. you only too well. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I always want to be. Glad there. I did it. Yeah, I'm well, I'm I'm, I'm so happy you're doing this. You know, yeah. what, thank you. I, I want to come to Texas and yes. I want to see you. Please, you know, you I'm, got a place to stay for you. I'm, I'm going to get back in shape uh, and I'm, I'm going to come there and do some work. I, I'm going to catch up with you, and we're going to have some good times. But in the meanwhile, Mike, do you want to finish off with saying thank you to anybody? Um, anything at all, you know, we wrap yes. it up now and it's really, it's been so good. for me doing this podcast because I didn't want to do it. I've had a lot of offers to do it for the past four years. And I turned down all of them. I know. I comfortable, but um, I'm glad I did it. I'm going to do more. I want to say thank you to um, everybody, really. I mean, Joe Weider helped me. I mean, in his own way. I mean, you know, he kind of put us out there and, you know, yeah. made us a prostitute, but still, <laughs> <laughs> he helped us. You know, he gave yeah. us the opportunity. You know, he put us in the magazines, and then we—it yeah. was up to us to show whatever we had going, and of course ourselves. So I, I respect Joe Weider in his own way. I never, you know, have anything negative to say about him. Lee Haney's always a great friend of mine. You are always a great friend of mine. I'm friends with everybody. I really helped a lot of people. A lot of people helped me, and I'm. I love all y'all, man. I love all y'all. Y'all my bodybuilding and fitness family is what I call y'all for life and will always yeah. be like that. I have my I have my gang family, yeah. and my old OG, you know. Yeah. And I got my bodybuilding family. Because that was like 20 years of, of that, you yeah. know. I have 40 years of the bodybuilding. So I have like two different little things. <laughs> but it was original. I was original there and I was original in the body one original in the bodybuilding. So I'm happy, John. I appreciate you giving me the, the, you know, for me to talk and speak, and, and 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 I will talk to you soon. Mike, it's it's been my pleasure. I I can't I I can't express how how good this makes me feel, not for just yeah. doing this podcast, but just to be able to talk to you like this face to face. It's been a long time 
brother, yeah. you know, and, you know, I can still, still got the love for each other. And yeah. um, hopefully hey, in the near future. Hey, the thing we did, at, uh, I think it was the light, the one in New York. The, the limelight. <laughs> the limelight. Do you remember that? <laughs> we was in the, the, the Roman outfits, remember? Yeah, yeah. And Ryan Moss. We, we got a photo in Ebony Magazine or something holding hands. Yes, we, that yeah. Too, yeah, yeah, remember, yes. yeah. We did some things together, John. Yeah, We're super there, good friends, man. There's a lot of stuff that we did that I that you've just reminded me of. I forgot all about yeah. that. Was that was an abandoned church? The, the line, yeah, line. remember, yeah, <laughs> right, <Mom>. they, yeah, <laughs> in New York in the middle of the 80s. <laughs> You know, that sort of stuff doesn't Brian happen anymore. Something Brian took us to, yeah. Well, it was, I remember, I, for me, it was just like one big party, I guess. <laughs> you, you know, it, it was. It was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we sure had a good time that night. We sure had a good time. We, anytime you and I were together, even when we were competing against each other, In Vegas, we always had a good time. A super good time together, John. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mike, listen, um, again, thank you so much. God bless you. God be with you. Please, let's stay in touch. And hopefully one day soon I'll be able to shake your hand and give you a hug. Um, yes, sir. All right. Take, take you, care. Sir. And I wish you and your family all the best. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Mike. Bye. Thank you.